Hi everybody, this is Joanne. And in this dish I have about two million mouse cells. This mouse was alive in 1960. So how is it that some of these cells are still here today? Because when we take cells from an organism and we put them on something plastic like this, which we call in vitro in a cell biology lab, these cells often don't want to survive. So what we now know is that we need to change a little something about the DNA and select the cells that want to live like this. This is sometimes accomplished just simply by waiting for some of them to go ahead and change. Sometimes we do it by adding a virus. Sometimes we do it by adding a chemical. These mouse cells are lovely and they're easy to work with and they've helped us understand a little bit more about the mouse as an organism they help us understand how these cells behave, their genetic makeup, otherwise the DNA. They help us understand what kind of proteins are secreted. If these cells were diseased, we can study it as a model for how a disease progresses and also create new drugs to help uh, cure the disease. If we added viruses to this dish, we can study the life cycle of a virus and how it affects the cells and then we could also create vaccines uh, to preempt a disease. I can also take these cells and change them into other cells, which is the first step in creating new replacement organs, which is our hope many years down the line. So it's nice to have these mouse cells, but to study human diseases, it would be really good to have human cells. And as it turns out, back in the 1950s, there was a scientist trying to do just that. The scientist one day was very fortunate that a young African-American woman came into the hospital with cervical cancer. A biopsy sample of this cancer was sent to him. And it turns out these cells divided prolifically and grew just perfectly in glass. These cells since then have been used uh, to help cell biologists refine their skills in uh, creating the media in which they grow, the conditions that these cells need to continue on, how to freeze these cells and ship them and share them all across the world so everybody, every scientist can help create benefits for all mankind. But then there's a sad, dark part to the story and that is what's covered in today's book written by Rebecca Skloot. This marvelous book is called The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Her name, of course, is the uh, beginnings of uh, the name of the cell line, Gila. This book talks about the woman, Henrietta Lacks, and her family. Henrietta gave those cells up without consent. There was no such thing as informed consent for patients back then. So this book discusses that ethical issue. This book also discusses the ethical issue behind who gets uh, the benefit from cells taken from a patient and used to create a new drug. So is it the patient? Is it the scientist? I'm not going to tell you. It's a good uh, thing to look up and discover in this book. Uh, these cells were used to discover, uh, to study about polio. We learned about um, how cancer actually progresses. Um, these cells were even sent into space. These cells have been used more often in cell biology research than any other established cell line that's um, ever come into existence. This book was written very uh, at a quick pace, very cleanly. Um, I really enjoyed this book, not only uh, because of the cell biology aspect, but because of the humanity aspect because Rebecca had to go out and discover a lot, not just about the science, but about the family. The family who was uh, unable to afford health care for themselves. And then even after all these cells were being used to make great advances in medical research, they received nothing in return. So these are important issues that are brought up, socioeconomic issues that need to be considered um, that scientific discoveries do not just impact the scientist or just a few people, that it can have widespread repercussions through society. And I think that's the ultimate take-home message from this book. This book, 
I will probably be purchasing several copies to share with family and friends and will ultimately become required reading for my university students. It's that important. I think you will definitely enjoy this book, uh, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. Uh, great read for anyone, not just scientists. All right, thank you so much for listening. Bye.